hello everyone. This time it will be a uh, it will be two tier lists for Tekken games. I'll do that because again there is not there is not a progressive playthrough with Tekken games. It is more of a PvP game kinda. I mean what is the point of playing like Tekken 3, Tekken 5? It is just 10 stages, you fight the enemies and it's over. I mean there is not I can't have a playthrough video with Tekken, so I decided to make a tier uh, list of characters and the games. I'll begin with games, and meanwhile I'll talk about the franchises and I'll talk about the times, and I'll talk about Tekken 8, etc. It will go on and on. Now this one is for games and now the first two Tekkens are unplayable by today's standards. I mean it has those two have those huge ass jumps. Controls are not really tight. So I mean these are ancient games. I mean they are uh, respect let's put them to C because there are some ga games that actually damaged the franchise and fucked up the momentum the franchise had. I'll talk about them in detail here. So these these two were respectable for their times, but at the same time you can't play these two and enjoy today, especially if you played one of the later games. Except that fucking game here. Now before beginning to rant about Tekken 4, I must talk about a piece of shit called the main man Sui. This guy is a biased piece of shit. If you follow Tekken through this guy, I suggest you to just abandon. He is biased, he has dumbass opinions, which will I talk about more in the character section. He is not pro, he is not... I mean, he is a good player perhaps, but why would we care about what he thinks, especially when his biases are showing up on his tier lists. In his tier list, Tekken 4 is like here and Tekken 3 is like here. In what planet this makes sense? You know what I mean? Tekken 4 killed the momentum that Tekken 3 created basically. They had to come come up with something good like this one, Tekken 5. Otherwise this game tried something but failed hardcore. And guess why that main man Sui guy put them to like A or S tier? Let me guess. Because he is a Kazuya player and he's obsessed with that and in Tekken 4 Kazuya had his grand return. Like who gives a shit? I mean think about it this way, like Kazuya is like a Vegeta kind of character. I'm cool with that. I am cool with the character. He's good he's a good character. He's edgy, he's tough. The storyline is there history is there so again Kazuya is a great character but watching that guy's content almost make me hate, made me hate, hate Kazuya because of, the, because of his stupid bias you know what I mean Tekken 4 had ridiculous graphics I mean there are some games like Tekken 4 in which technically graphics are better than the older games but the design is so dog shit that it, it, it looks worse than the older games Tekken 3 looks better than Tekken 4. Not technically, but I'm talking about the environment, the atmosphere, the face designs of the characters. Tekken 4 looks terrible in everything. Let me show you the fat face of Horan, for example. Look at that. Uh, fucking fat face of him. It looks like it's made from plastic or like here. All the edginess of the character is gone. It is like it is so soulless. You know what I mean? Look at that. He looks like a baboon or something like that. It was so it was so terrible again. Technically of course the graphics are better here but uh, come on. Th this is so terrible. And look at the Tekken 3 version. There, there, there's, there is some badassery here, you know. 
he looks serious he looks disciplined and his alternative black costumes even better you know this is so iconic uh, this is not I'm sorry graphics could be more could have more pixels or whatever this looks worse and this applies to almost every character and final boss is like hey Hachi only no new bosses it kinda takes away a little because I met the franchise with Tekken 3 and hey Hachi is I, I saw Heihachi as like a sub boss uh, of course later years I understood that how badass this was but when I first met with this franchise he was like Ogre's bitch basically Ogre was like holding him up like he was a failed servant and he was like punishing him or whatever I literally thought that Heihachi was like Ogre's servant in that game because of that section where he lifts him up transforms through Ogre so seeing him as final boss in Tekken 4 was kinda like a downgrade for me I mean of course right now I have more knowledge but still having something new and fresh it still would be better in my opinion a different boss you know franchise always all about the three main Mishimas and it could get stale very fast luckily with Tekken 7 they made a they, take, they took a step and killed one of them in 8 probably either Kazuya and Jin will die as well and finally and I think in Tekken 8 characters will have more importance to them I'm talking about other characters I already see like in trailers Horang and Lars was together involving in a mission or something Shaoyu was in the Yakushima stage the place was invaded by Jax and Shaoyu was about to attack them I think Tekken 8 story will give some importance to the other characters as well which is seriously needed in this franchise so Tekken 4 is dog shit one good thing about Tekken 4 was the uh, Tekken 4 mod but it is such a minor uh, positive they tried um, a diagonal I mean stages with you know diagonal surfaces I mean they tried uh, I'm not taking any points for that but again designs are terrible stories alright some people like to overrate it it was alright nothing more and I mean roster was incredibly small for Tekken 4 a PS2 game a PS2 Tekken I mean this game I mean I believe gameplay was so bad as well I mean I never touched this one because I saw the way it looks and everyone was talking about how bad it looked as well sale numbers are low as fuck also so this is the place also this is the fucking game that introduced that stupid Paul defeated Ogre bullshit it is such a bullshit it was a retcon because Tekken is a tournament Ogre is the final challenge in order for Paul to reach there he should won the tournament he should have defeated Heihachi and Jin as well Mishima fanboy, fanboys can't accept that but it, they, they act like oh Paul arrived there because it is like a race to the finish or something what kind of a stupid logic is this it is easy to open a screen and write that Paul defeated Ogre but it doesn't make any sense he couldn't possibly face Ogre because he didn't won the tournament okay I mean in the Tekken 3 itself there is nothing like that in the original Tekken 3 let me show you this Heihachi stage I hope I can find the right angle I mean here it is seen but I want to see an in-game picture like this is basically uh, the pyramid of ogre but this is like the exter one of the rooms that looks to the sky it is one of the external parts where you fought fight ogre is in the same temple 
but it is the center of the pyramid. I mean, come on, le yeah, here. This is the other side of Heihachi stage. Let me just grow it up. Also, let me. Yeah, it looks fine. Let's see how it looks in OBS. It's fine. Look at this. This corridor leads you to Heihachi uh, Ogre's room, where you fought fight with Ogre. In the canon original Tekken 3 story, you Jin, I mean Jin obviously the victor. Jin defeats Heihachi, fight probably drags to Ogre stage, you know, they fight and fight uh, goes through the Ogre stage there. Heihachi gets knocked out and since their fight is so intense, it brings Ogre. And then Ogre and Jin fight. And just as Ogre, just when Ogre loses first round, and since Heihachi is also there lying, Ogre takes Heihachi and transforms to True Ogre. This is the canon real Tekken 3 story, which is changed in Tekken 4 with a picture. There is nothing visual because you can't do this visually. In order for this to appear visually, Paul should defeat Jin and Heihachi as well, but it didn't happen. Alright, this is why in the Tekken Bloodlines anime, Paul just defeated in the middle of the tournament. Because again, this is a tournament. How could Paul face Ogre possibly, even? And him defeating Ogre doesn't make sense in the first place. Paul is a regular human. Ogre is a god, godly being who can fly, who can have telekinetic powers, ridiculous strange. How the fuck could Paul defeat Ogre possibly, you know? And and that retcon in Tekken 4 corrected in Tekken 6, which will be here. In Tekken 6 there is an animated, a black and white animated uh, series inside the game, which basically tells you the whole story from Tekken 1 to 6. And there you see Jin facing both forms of Ogre. There are no Paul. There has never been Paul. Paul was there because during the Tekken 3 days he had his unblockable which is very easy to perform and everyone was talking about oh Paul has a dead fist therefore he should be strong. I mean back in the internet wasn't a thing so there was such a common thought like that. P Paul was extremely popular popular during Tekken 3 days. He was popular in Tekken 7 as well. I mean character is cool at all. Don't get me wrong. He's a cool badass American character. I like him. Especially in Tekken 3. His face is so amazing. Just look at this. I'm sorry I, pr I, I write over. I'm talking about his character select screen. I mean look at the face the face has some badassery some he's a tough guy especially his biker outfit it is so iconic and cool burning skull on his back he is tough his his moves are impactful in every game in the latest games his face design is not as tough as this one I mean yeah, he's still tough looking, but there is something missing. Like, here, he's he looks a little bit more edgier in Tekken 3. And he was vastly popular back in the day. I remember that. Especially in arcade machines, everyone was talking about his death fist or whatever. Every character has unblockables that nearly one-shots the opponent, or perhaps one-shots. It is not special to Paul. Paul's unblockable is just easy to perform. That being said, Tekken 6 is here because it damage. Perhaps I should put it here, but the actual gameplay is. You know what? Here, here. Let me explain why. I mean, C tier is exclusive to these two games. Tekken 6 ruined the franchise. It introduced that stupid um, World War bullshit. Which fucked up the storyline. Storyline was more personal back in the day. It introduced some of the most bland characters which I'll talk about here. 
it include it introduced that bound shit where like combos were already long in Tekken 5. With wall since walls added added like there were already long combos possible. Like that wasn't enough they added that bound shit where you where character just smashes the opponent in the middle of combo, you know, of course the enemy is on the midair. It just slams the opponent to the ground and opponent bounces and combos get longer. This is stupid. This is for those Korean nerds who waste their lives on this fucking game. I mean, at least some of them are like pro players so they earn money from this shit. I can actually respect that. But there are also tons of them that just you know, memorize the frame rates of each character, play a character despite it being bland and garbage, but of course it is good in gameplay, so they are playing that character for the sake of that, and I'm talking about outside of the tournaments. In the tournaments you should do whatever you should do to win, because you do it for money. This is what being pro all about. So Tekken 6 was garbage in these regards, the graphical advancements were very good in this one actually. It uh, the first time I saw Tekken 6 I was like, "Oh, it looks it looked so amazing back in the day." But again, story elements was garbage. Story mode was garbage. They tried to replace Jin with Lars which failed because Lars with that ridiculous anime hair will never have the attraction that Mishima's other Mishima's provided. The Mishima's are manly characters. Every single one of them, from Jin to Heihachi to Kazuya. They are not these anime characters with ridiculous haircuts. I mean, I mean they are different, but in a way it is iconic. With Lars, it is just too much anime. You can. Lars doesn't have the it factor to replace Jin, I'm sorry. And him having that, him being, him being in love with Alisa, which is a robot, a fucking robot, literally, it's, it's stupid. And I, I believe it is a complete robot. It is not even a cyborg or something like that. It is like Jack Six. And he's in love with her. Wow. That being said, I mean, I'll talk about characters, I mean in character tier list, this one and this, where is that, this one, almost buried the franchise. So These two sold so less than its competitors. If I remember correctly, Harada had to convince Namco to keep going after the failure of this fucking game. Now this uh, th this game was so hyped because the first Tekken Tag tournament is here. Since knowing that how good the first one was, I had huge expectations one for this one. But again, it carried the stupid elements in Tekken 6. But since you have two characters, combos were even more ridiculous. There were like 20, 25 hit combos there. That kill the opponent almost. Two characters are too much. I mean, with two characters and bounce, it was too much. When your health lowers and you enter that state, I I couldn't remember the name. Like in a rage state, it was something like that. For some reason, I couldn't remember now. In that state. Some moves do ridiculous damage. You know? I mean, the game has no storyline to begin with, but character designs were fine. Endings were nice. It had all characters. So, the game had everything going for it, but just because it carried the gameplay elements of Tekken 6, it failed. It failed so hard. And it's sad because it deserved more. But you know something, if I don't like a game in Tekken, it usually, it is also a failure. I'm consistent with this one. I'm, an, I'm a huge Ogre fan, 
and this game disrespected that character a lot. It was a free DLC, but it completely got butchered in this game. And therefore, I I was already a little bit neg negative towards the game. And then, of course, sale numbers and rest of all the problems just buried this game to the ground. Luckily, Tekken 7 happened. I'll talk about it since it is the reigning game still. Let's talk about Tekken Tag 1. It was the continuation of a good game which is Tekken 3. And on top of that the tag mechanics was amazing in this one. Because again, it, tag mechanics are good. There are lots of special win poses, intros. Endings were great. I mean endings were in like in-game graphics. But the music was there, story was there. Unknown was a good boss. Each character was good in a way. Ogres were amazing. Ogres Venner and Mishimas were like the top tier characters in this one. Which makes sense, they are the main characters. I mean it doesn't ha it didn't have to be this way, but in Tekken 6 the top tier character was Bob. Imagine you are watching Evo, Evo tournaments and both sides picks Bob. I wouldn't watch that, you know. Why would I watch this shit? Why would I watch Bob? You know? Watching Bob is like the, could be like the most boring thing after Jack 7 and Dragon Ball. I'll talk about that in 7 a little. Tag is here. It was an amazing continuation to this legend which I played a lot which introduced me to the franchise which take took the gaming world by a by storm fuck me man v seriously he put this one like here and four was like above fuck me man v seriously his opinions are garbage and biased Tekken 3 is easiest here you can play Tekken 3 today with your friends and it is still playable Perhaps even better beca because there are no ridiculous combos, no like super arts or whatever. It is just raw fighting. It was quite balanced as well. I mean, each character was broken, but since every character is broken in a way, every ca it is balanced. There were some still broken s shit, you know. I mean, Ogre was ridiculously powerful in this one. S tier alone in Tekken 3, Ogre is. But, and Mishima's engine and Shayu was like a tier below. It was something along this line. But every character can beat every, every, any other one in this game. Atmosphere is there, endings are amazing. Still, I think Tekken 3 endings are the most iconic and memorable ones in the franchise. I mean, again, these two were too old. The whole ending shit begin with Tekken 3. People were playing 10 rounds just to watch the ending they wanted over and over and over again in this game. Then afterwards, of course, internet became much more common, and you can you you are you became able to watch any ending you want from YouTube. But back in the day, that wasn't the case. If, if I got bored as a child, I would pick a character and play through arcade mode just to see the ending. Um, amazing memories with this one. Tekken Force mode was nice in this one as well. Not better than 4 or 6, but it was there. Amazing. Again, we can, it is safe to say it was very balanced. In a way, every character was, every character was fine. Characters had their own stages. Which is a huge problem in the later Tekken games. Tekken should be a tournament in which rounds are happened in different locations. You know, Shayu had that amusement park as her stage. Ogre was in his pyramid. Um, Eddie was in somewhere in Brazil. Horang was in his. Whole rank was where he basically learned Taekwondo. It was his, you know, training camp or something like that. 
Live us in Hong Kong streets, and music, music fit the character so character so much in this one. I mean, think about it. Characters have their theme songs, which elevates the characters a diff to a different state. Latest characters feel so bland and boring because they don't have their stages, their the musics. They are not involved in story modes. Like, what the fuck are they? They are bland as fuck. I'll talk about that in create the uh, um, Tekken characters. Five is here. It clean up, cleaned up the mess that Tekken Four created. It corrected its mistakes. Story was all great. Jim Pachi was all right. Although it was a little bit ridiculous, you know, you already have a son, father, grandfather. What is the point of having grand grandfather? Be, I mean, they can be a little bit more original. Kinda like unknown. Unknown was such a good boss, in my opinion. But still, the gameplay was nice. Graphics were nice in their time. No bound shit. Not diagonal surfaces on stages. Some iconic music was there. Intro was amazing in this one. There were dialogues. I mean, you enter with a character and play the arcade mode, and every character has a rival, and there are dialogues in certain stages. You know, people want that story elements to get uh, have back for years now. Second file was so good, good in this in that aspect. Dark Resurrection. Some people say like, oh, it is vastly be pa uh, better, but no, I think it is the same. It is, it is just same. I mean, introduced good characters. Armor King returned. Arm I like Armor King m very very much. L Lily introduced here became a staple of the franchise. New newcomers are all great in this game. So Tekken Revolution is here. I mean. It wasn't good or anything, but it also it was harmless. I don't know what this is. is. Let's put, put it here as well. Again, it's not like these games are better than the D tier games. I mean, these are not main titles, but these are also harmless. These three games harmed franchise so hard. Tekken are getting mainstream attention now thanks to this game. Tekken 7, since this game fucked up the budget, this game didn't have any single player content. They had, they had to cut from the game due to the budget issues, but still, they did such an amazing job with this game. Graphics were very good for its time. There were, there were these super armor moves, rage arts. I mean, they are good additions. Rage drives, I like the rage drives more as an addition than Rage Arts because again Rage Arts um, basically you know they help the players who get their ass kicked and I don't like it basically I mean why would why should you lose after you nearly killing your opponent but not being able to do that one final finishing blow I don't like it much Rage drives are fine, and I think Tekken 8 will be even better because heat mode is kind of like rage drives. You know, the moves that uh, allows you to enter the heat mode or empowered moves that you can perform in uh, rage rage state. Those are basically rage drives, the same thing, but you can activate it whenever you want. Uh, Instead of just waiting for your health to expire to a certain degree. Tekken 8 I think will be even better than 7. But 7 is good regardless. I mean don't get me wrong. And the uh, story mode was too short. I mean it was good. With Tekken 6 story, story mode was garbage. In 7 it was good. It was serious. It had cool moments. The final battle was amazing. The only thing I didn't like here was Akuma. Because I mean Akuma defeated Heihachi and then Heihachi f fight with Kazuya in the end. But Heihachi was a loser at this point. He already lost to Akuma. I couldn't fight I f I couldn't take final fight as seriously as I should. I mean it was still amazing but 
Heihachi losing to Akuma prior to that kind of take away the seriousness a little. And it was still amazing how Kazuya did perform the huge rage art, but Heihachi was slowly getting up. Kazuya was in disbelief. I they really made me believe that Heihachi could actually kill Kazuya there. I mean, it could have happened. I wouldn't mind. I like Heihachi more anyway. I mean, Heihachi is way more iconic. Because Kazuya and Jin is like similar to each other in a way. Heihachi with that hairstyle, I see posts in like Instagram or Facebook that are not related to the gaming at all. But there were posts with, you know, Heihachi and his hairstyle. He has somewhat main relevancy. I'm talking, let's talk about in, it in the character section. Because this part is done. Tekken 7 was amazing. You know, guest characters was a little bit imbalanced. I mean, I'm talking about like Akuma and Geese, but it's alright. It was just incompetitive. You don't have to be competitive. You don't have to reach Tekken God tier. You can pick a low tier character and play with people like yourself in the tier you belong. You don't have to be good in Tekken to enjoy it. That's my tier list for this game. I think it is fair. So perhaps some would put Tekken 5 here as well. Tekken 5 wasn't as groundbreaking as Tekken 3 and it didn't revolutionize and made it mainstream like Tekken 7 did. Maybe Tekken Tag 1 to here. But let's keep it here. Perhaps one thing arguable is Tag 1 being here or here realistically by the way I don't um, order the objects in the tiers in between them I mean I'm not saying 3 is better than 7 or anything this is what tier lists are all about this is not a ranking that being said I'm getting to the characters now now the pictures are very nice. Whoever did this uh, tier list, thank I thank you for that. Now this guy goes to fuck off tier. As a fighting game character, he's clearly an icon, but in Tekken Seven, I don't like him at all. I mean, he doesn't belong there. Basically, he fucked up story mode. Also, he Tekken doesn't need Street Fighter. Tekken sells better than Street Fighter. You know, only fat neckbeards I that play Mugen and buy Street Fighter regardless will, you know, still talk about Akuma. Tekken players don't care and don't need Street Fighter characters, much less Akuma. You, this animals, animals like that goes to fuck off tier as well, except with a few expect. Ex 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 exceptions I couldn't speak fuck the ca kangaroo fuck this dinosaur they look ridiculously stupid like Gun but Gun was at least memorable in a way these dinosaurs are like Gun but also boring bland and not memorable at all Gun during the Tekken 3 days was such a troll character so in a way it was fun we have an alphabetical order. Now I'll make a realistic, a realistic list as much as possible. I'll consider their play rates, popularity, importance to the story, etc. Ogre is an easy S tier character. It is the boss character of the best game. In I mean the most important one, the one that kick-started the whole franchise as a mainstream gaming franchise. It was the first transformation in the series. I mean, Devil Kazuya was there, but in the Tekken 2, Devil and Kazuya were two separate things. In Kaz Even in Kazuya's ending, Devil and Kazuya are not the same person. It was a retcon made for later. Devil was an 
um, Devil was a different being, but he looked like Kazuya. So they changed the story to Kazuya have like I mean I believe Kazuya had the devil inside of him, but in Tekken 3 Devil was out when Kazuya defeated. It was something along these lines, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong. Uh, when I feel like I'm wrong, I could be wrong at something. I can tell. But again, the first real transformation was this one. Him transforming to True Ogre. He had some of the most uh, badass movements. You know, when you beat somebody with Ogre, you feel like you are manhandling your opponent. Kinda like Paul, in that regard. The moves are tough and hard hitting. Grabs are really great. I like the one where he grabs the opponent's legs and he basically swings him to left and right in such a huge speed it looks like the opponent's all bones are crushed in Tekken Tag 2 he had telekinetic grabs which were really cool as well his story was there he killed lots of characters or put some of them into coma he's god of fighting so when he found someone strong he basically fights them and gets their movements and their fighting experience he damaged June I mean Harada uses a uh, Twitter account too much probably emo bold haircutted Korean nerds was always bitching about how June's death was terrible or whatever then Harada finally said he's not that he's she's missing just leave the fuck leave me alone for fuck's sake it, this, it was basically that o originally Jun was dead in the Tekken 3's intro Jun's head was in Ogre's arm it was such a cool shot by the way let, 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 let me just Tekken 3 intro arcade oh what happened there I mean just look at the shot here I'm also ch I'm not used to I'm not used to OBS recorder that much yet I mean uh, c come on he looks he looks so cool look at the background those pillars they have uh, runic symbols on them the sky is all dark the, this is Jun's head with hairs Jin had that red uh, red background with dragons behind he's just um, adjusting his glove here then as Ogre looks at him he just punches to the screen everything was so cool in Tekken 3 in what planet someone could put Tekken 4 above 3 I don't know those people didn't play Tekken 3 basically I mean they are in minority already because Tekken 4 sucked at sales this is based they, they, they probably met with Tekken franchise be, via Tekken 4 and that's why they pretend that Tekken 4 was a black sheep it was actually better or whatever no it was garbage I like the Japanese uh, faces of Kazuya and Jun here as well. I mean, their Tekken 8 face models are amazing. I love, I loved it so much. But here they were also very good. I liked so much. And this was and this shot teases Kazuya's return, and one day Jin will basically you know fight them. It also teases that Jin is their son because. You see them back to back and then Jin appears on the screen with getting elements from both of them. Everything is amazing in that. Ogre is such a cool character. His ending was amazing. The stage is amazing. I mean, I wish Harada... This is basically Shao Kahn of this franchise. And I think... and I, I mean... Akuma, Shao Kahn and Ogre are like their counterparts but Ogre sees no loves because of that I can't put him to S+. But he should be an S+, in my opinion. 
All Harada have to do is return the character back and give him a proper storyline with some badassery. This is all this character is. This character has everything going going for it. Elsa. Perhaps there's a C tier is necessary. Did I say above? I'm sorry. Let's put one tier below, which will be C tier. And Gan is here, Alisa is here. A tier is preserved for characters better than Alisa. Alisa was unique in a way. He played, he was in storyline. She was okay, I mean. There were some iconic things like she giving her head to the enemy, it explodes, it was a throw I believe. Chainsaws, story appearance, appearances. I mean character was fine, I, I wouldn't put it this C tier. Anything below C tier is garbage by the way. B and above is fine. I didn't like the stupid Lars and Alyssa story mode. She wasn't taken vengeance also, but it wasn't a good movie really. I mean, it was fine, but come on, there were like five characters in the whole movie, which make which make it which makes it feel empty, which represents the problem of this being a franchise back in the day. Only the three Mishimas were were involved, and everyone else was like unimportant. Luckily. Hopefully Tekken 8, Tekken 8 will solve it. Angel is bland but not also boring. A cool concept. But is she even important than Elsa? No. Angel is here. Angel, perhaps if they make it a real character with storylines. Then why not? I like the design so much in Angel. The second, I'm talking about this Tekken Tag 2 design. Everything was great. I mean, character models in Tag 2 were great overall, even Ogre. I like Tekken 3 version much more, but in Tag 2 they did they did it justice. Same with Angel here. I like Angel, but again, there isn't much. I mean, people don't even know if she's a canon character or not. How can I rate this to here or something? But design and the Tag 2 intro was amazing with her. Her face before shooting laser beam, everyone was talking about that back in the day. She was facing Troger. Graphics were amazing in Tekken Tag 2. She has lots of cool factor. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Enat Williams is in easy, easy A tier. Easy. Easily. This is why Alyssa is B tier and this one is here. Anna is so sexy, kinky, she and Nina is like the different side of a coin in a way. I mean William's sisters are amazing. She does loves flips so back in the day I loved Anna more than Nina but then later Nina became one of my mains together with love. But still she's so hot, she has the aura you know. Especially in Tekken 6 ending. I loved her so much. I mean, here she's already good. You know, she's hot in every possible way. But in Tekken 6 ending, I mean, her clothes are stylish as well. Let me tell you that. But also Tekken 6 Anna ending. Just, just look at how sexy she is, come on. Just... Uh, she was so amazing. She she should have been a staple in the franchise. I was enraged when she wasn't in the uh, main um, roster. But when she returned with this amazing dress, I was sold out. Anna is amazing. Asuka... She deserves a tier as well. She became a staple. And she came with Tekken 5 and 
again, Tekken 5 had amazing new characters. Asuka was one of them. She introduced a unique playstyle with counter stances. So it was defensive, simple to play. Great character design, nice tits. <laughs> of course, I'm just kidding when I'm talking about tits and sexiness. The designs are good with these characters. Her rivalry and with Lily became a staple in the franchise as well. So Asuka, yeah, she deserves to be there. Beck is C tier. Not because he's bad or anything, I mean, he was good but he replaced with Ho Rang, which is by far the better character. They had that master and student relationship which is respectable. But in the end, alright, I'll take that. C tier is for okay characters. Let's make it okay. Okay, fine. Everything below, these two tiers for terrible characters. <sighs> He's a little bit different than Ho Rank. He represents a fighting uh, style, which is Taekwondo, of course. So I respect the character, but I can't put him next to the Alisa. Someone like Alisa. Which is very active in storylines, and she's in the last three games. I mean, she, it is already leaked, she will be in Tekken 8. So I can't put Bake as an equal to uh, Alyssa, basically. Again, I'm going realistic with these characters. Okay? If it was up to my liking, Alyssa should be here. I'm going as realistic as I can, and as unbiased as I can. Bob is here, but you know what? He was such a boring character though, I mean... He had a catchphrase, but what did he do? He wasn't a, he wasn't a part of the main storyline in any capacity. Yeah, let's put him here. Uh, again, he's bland. We already had Ganryu as your, you know... Fat guy, you don't need Bob. But in that Street Fighter Cross Tekken game, he was a good match with Rufus together. All right, just she's like the uh, doorkeeper between fine and boring bland fuck. Who the fuck is this guy? Is that Fakram? It is Bruce. Yeah, B Bruce. All right, Bruce belongs to here. Now I have an I have an account in GameFAQ and I probably have a post with this video in GameFAQ. There's a piece of shit called Joshua Segovia who spams Bruce post like he wants him back. It makes me hate the character even more than I already did. He is bland. I mean, there was a potential in his Tekken 6 ending. He was in the military of Kazuya. So who, he could have came back, he could came back in Tekken 8 as a bodyguard or a general in Kazuya's army having operations. He is a kickbox character and which is one of the most, most popular fighting sports in the world. So having a kickbox character would be nice, but he's too bland. The blandest character in the franchise. Brian is S tier easily. He came in Tekken 3. He's my brother's favorite and my brother's main together with Ho Rang. Not mine necessarily, but again, many. P it is very popular. His taunt, his tough moveset. He's a cyborg. He has a cool factor. His endings are always nice. He's always a staple in the franchise, deservingly so. And you know what? I believe Brian is a kickboxer already. Yeah, he's a kickboxer. So, easy S tier Brian, with Brian. Character, the white hair, the tattoos, the tough look. Brian has everything. And again, 
this this is one thing Tekken 6 did well. Character designs were amazing in that one. It's sad that Tekken 6 sucked when it comes to storyline and gameplay. Just look at Brian's face in the ending. Yeah, I'm talking about that. Just wow, man. The tattoos, the look, the eye color, hair color, everything is so cool with Brian. He was great in Tekken 3 as well. It was more old school, like that, or like that, or like that. The scar was amazing. It, it, it was so t cool and tough, you know. Tekken needs characters like that. Brian is an easiest tier. This is Christy, I believe, because we switch from B to C. Christy is a great... She was such a great sex appeal, first of all. Her Tekken 5 and 6 pictures come to my mind. He's also a capo, and if... I mean, in, mo in many polls, people want Christy over Eddie. Not necessarily because she is better, but she is like the love interest to Eddie. So people can accept her and people can accept a change easier. And design was there, it was capo, but she had, I believe, a smaller hitbox, but lower, uh, I mean, um, shorter legs, so reaching the opponents would be higher, but also opponent wouldn't be able to reach you easily, with just like with Eddie. So she was unique in a way. And let's just look at the picture one more time. Just, she, she's already flexible, she's a capo. So sexy. I mean, characters need to be like that a little because, again, people come and go. For a 14 year old kid in their like puber puberty age, Christy is a sex appeal and it could make the whole game look much more appealing. I'm talking about this picture. This is so iconic. This with tits bouncing here. The outfit is all shiny. She's a capo Brazilian. Hair color, face, everything is so good in this one. Not necessarily important or iconic like Anna or Asuka. This is her place, which is fine. But I don't remember this design though, like in what game she looked like that? But I'm pretty sure this is Christy again. This is Claudio C again and Combat. This is cl clearly Christy. Now Tekken 7 sucked ass when it comes when it comes to newcomers, but I think Claudio is a nice uh, nice addition. I can see Claudio being a staple in the upcoming games. He she's already introduced for Tekken 8, deservingly so. This character belongs to A tier easily. He is that um he's he is that aristocratic character that had access to that satellite. He he's he's that serious marksman, he has light moves. I mean all the main Tekken characters are devils, evil powers. So it is a nice change of pace with having a character with uh, light divine powers I like that so much combat is fine it is like Mokujin I believe mimic character but it is way less iconic Devil Jin you can't put Devil Jin anywhere but S plus when Jin had that ending where Heihachi shot him and he became Devil Jin because of that. I mean, he he didn't give in to Devil easily, but he was about to die, so Devil finally take over. They did ama they did an amazing job in Tekken Bloodline. I yeah, I believe that Netflix anime called Bloodline. He got shot. He was in that Infinite Azure stage with Jun. Since he was about to die, you know. He finally had to give in to the devil. It was so good. And Paul was there. 
He saw Devil Kazuya beating shit out of Eihachi and now he witnesses that shit again. His face was amazing. Tekken Bloodline was short, pro there probably wasn't enough budget. But it was accurate as far as the history of the uh, game franchise goes. It was uh, loyal to the source material. And after that Devil Jin was so iconic that it became a character of its own. I remember having Devil Jin posters in my uh, cell phone as wallpaper back in the day. There were so many cool shots. Devil Jin is yes plus. Gameplay was he was a hard character to play but it was also rewarding. So that's there. It was the balanced Mishima I believe. I mean I don't care about that uh, nerdy stuff that much. I'm more about lore and I'm more about you know casual gameplay. I don't care about being competitive. Baskonovich is another okay fine character. I mean again sometimes you need character like that too for variety. You need um, troll characters like that because let's say you play Tekken like for like two years. When you get bored and you want to entertain yourself either you can pick a troll character like that and enjoy yourself a little. Not every character has to be has to have huge play rates. Variety is something important. I believe in var variety. Dragonov is B tier. I mean first of all in in like the first Tekken 7 EVO tournaments Dragonov and Jax were all over the place. Dragonov was so boring to watch. Let alone Jax 7 as well. But Dragonov has the personality. He's that uh, cold-blooded Russian military guy. He looks tough. It's there. His rivalry with Raven is good. I mean not iconic or anything but I like it personally. And it looks like he's a staple so far. It's introduced in uh, Dark Resurrection in Tekken 5. And he appeared in every main game ever since. It's a good one. I believe his play rate, his usage rate is very high as, high as well if I remember. Good guy. Not iconic like these ones in my opinion. But every once in a while you can play Dragonov and it's a staple. Just like Elsa, you know. Eddie is here. It is recognizable. It is an it's a true alpha. It had an amazing storyline with Kazuya. Later, you know, I remember in Tekken 3's grandpa, he was in he was a prisoner. There is a outbreak. There was a riot or something. He was about to get arrested. Grandpa saves him. Then he, he meets with Christy. A love story happens there. I mean the guy is design is so good he's so such a handsome character in his own way and capo characters are like a staple in franchise fuck Tekken 8 when it comes to that Eddie shouldn't be a Eddie shouldn't be a, a DLC character in any mainline Tekken game ever I remember in Street Fighter Cross Tekken, Christy replaced him, but he was in like the ending. I mean, there were tag teams, they find Eddie, but Eddie says, tell her to forget me, and it was so sad, you know. Ed Eddie is a great character. Also, it is, uh, also Eddie is memorable, memorable for being a cheap character, a bottom ma button mesh character. I understand it being annoying but at the same time it is iconic and memorable because of that. It is like that since Tekken 3D games. And sometimes you can do such some cool shit with Eddie. Just by r mashing. It can go crazy sometimes. I like that. I prefer Eddie being a top tier character and getting some play in uh, tournaments compared to Dragonov. Because every once in a while some cool and crazy shit happens with Eddie when you play him. 
Eliza is alright. I don't understand what that snorling shit is. I don't understand her story. But again, design is so memorable. But let's put her to okay. Fine. Yeah, this is more. This is more uh, fair. Fuck Ran is another boring blunt. Fuck bland. Fuck. He came as a Diasi character. I mean, you already have a Marduk, and Marduk is a good character already. Why would you need an even larger guy for no reason? I mean, instead of Fuck Ram, you can add a story. You can add some story elements to Bruce and make it a more appealing character for the fan base. Fakram with its weird tattoos, overly large body with testosterone. It is she's unnecessary, basically. Fang is a good addition to the franchise. Easy A tier, perhaps S tier in the future with more addition to his personality. Or perhaps perhaps some story relevancy. It has a good move set. The character is a badass. The design is badass. He was so good in Tekken 5 intro. You know, him punching a pot of lava, killing his own master. His endings in each and every one of his endings, he was a legit badass, breaking meteorites, overpowering Paul and Love at the same time. I mean, I didn't like it. I think Love shouldn't be weaker than Fang. His rivalry with uh, Lee Wulong was amazing as well. Good character. I like Fang. And again, I'm not biased. I am a huge Lee Wulong fan. And I don't like his ass getting kicked by Fang. But I'm just realistic here. Now, I do not differentiate Love's. Where is uh, martial law? Because martial law is there much more than forest. Although forest was in the Tekken tree, which is the bigger deal in my opinion. But let's see. Yeah, martial law. Law is law is like gatekeeper between S and S plus. Again. I mean, I say I saved S plus for Mishima's. This is why Love can't be there. But almost as iconic, he is the best uh, Bruce Lee inspired character in fighting games. He is literally Bruce Lee himself. You know, his friendship with Paul is uh, iconic. Endings are amazing. Move set is amazing. Always a uh, Always a competitive character, deservingly so. This character should never be a low tier character, ever. A huge tribute to Bruce Lee. Love is S, character, S tier character. And Love... Look. When a cap... I mean, in Tekken 8, Eddie will be a DLC character for sure. Or Christy. I tell you, if Love becomes a DLC character in the future... You, you can bet there will be riots. There will be some people who will resist and not buy the game if love is not there. Harada's Twitter will would be filled with threats. I mean, it is not a good thing. You shouldn't threat a developer for like a video game character, but it would happen. That being said. Love is my childhood, one of my mains, together with Nina. I mean, I like Lee Wulong as well, but he's a DLC and he may not appear in Tekken 8, which would be a huge fuck you to me. But again, at least Love and Nina is consistently there, that's why they are my mains. I mean, I consider them as my mains. And if Nina doesn't appear in like Tekken 9. I'm pretty sure Anna would be there and I would play Anna with no problem. This is Ganryu, I believe. Okay, fine character. Low usage rate all the time, but it is a sumo character. I I like that uh, goofy 
relationship between him and Julia where he has a crush on Julia there were some fine things like in Tekken 6 ending all three Mishimas was like falling from the space it looked like a star falling and Ganyu was wishing like Julia Chang it was I mean he's likable I understand that he will never be a highly used character but he's a fine asset you know but still it is not a beat here he's fine he can come back every once in a while without a problem I like Ganryu and in Tekken 3 anime he was like bodyguard of Heihachi which was such a uh, nice touch I mean people often overlook the fat big fat characters like that especially in WWE usually characters like that would kick the shit out of these muscular guys that are smaller than them I mean let's think about WWE Big Show would pe would beat the shit out of uh, Steve Austin or Triple H in a real fight but muscle cells this is why those guys are like main attractions in WWE or here Mishimas are the main attractions guys like that are usually stronger in WWE there was Mark Henry which is like a black version of Gunryu he, he won world's strongest man competition the guy was lifting cars twisting spoons Undertaker was talking about like that guys like that are actually really really strong I like Gunryu for that Geese Howard again I put these characters to fo I mean yeah let's keep him in fuck off here again these two characters are good fighting game characters but in Tekken 7 they mess mess up with balances I mean developers could have just balanced them out but for some reason Harada likes, likes to suck dick off the other developers I don't understand my Tekken sells well better than these games Tekken sells better than Fatal Fury or Te Street Fighter okay again these characters are good if we consider them as like fighting game characters and not Tekken characters these guys all would be here easily or even here but again in Tekken 7 they disturb the balance too much I do not like meters in those 2D games also I want I like to focus on the action I don't want to consider the situation of the meter in the bottom right or bottom left corner while I'm playing the game this is why I kinda like heat system because you activate heat you do a overpowered rage dry like move and the meter disappears I mean you don't have to consider the timing of the meter that much this is why I like heat, heat system in Tekken 8 Gigas belongs to here, Nuff said there's nothing to talk about Heihachi is as iconic as Jin I think Kazuya is one step below and in Tekken 7 they are trying to push Kazuya as the poster boy for some reason so that he wouldn't fall behind Heihachi and Jin Jin is the pastor poor pastor boy for like decades and Heihachi with his design iconic design is there Kazuya was always like a step behind those two but in the latest games they he basically catched up with the other two with you know being in, appearing in smash being the poster boy representative of Tekken in Street Fighter cross Tekken I mean Kazuya pushed to that but before that Kazuya was a step behind the other two and Heihachi was there in every game he will be a DLC for sure in Tekken 8 his moveset is iconic, hairstyle is iconic he's the one, he's in the center of the core story all the time whether with Kazuya or Jin he don't need the he's a pure Mishima, this is what I like about him him he's like Zeus of this franchise old guy with lightning and badass raw power 
No, you can easily tell he's stronger than Jin and Kazuya, but the other two have like the devil powers, and it is it is basically shown in Tekken Seven. He literally beat Kazuya so that Kazuya would. I mean, Kazuya basically couldn't maintain the devil form, and he untransformed back to his base form. And in Tekken Bloodline anime, in Tekken Seven, they basically officialize the state in which they are not Jin and Kazuya have red eye but they are not fully devil there's a state like that in uh, Tekken and this is how uh, Jin defeated Ogre you know he, Jin in it is established in Tekken 6 he basically talks about how when he saw uh, his mother's murderer something begin awakening in him it was that red-eyed state with Jin as well. It is the state that we will see in Tekken 8 as well. When Jin performs uh, his super art, his eyes are red, the tattoos of devil are there, but no wings. You know, Jin and Kazuya has that, but Heihachi has that raw Mishima power. He is a more disciplined fighter than the other two, in my opinion. He's basically Zeus and I like Heihachi so much. I like Heihachi more than Jin and Kazuya. Horang is easy S tier. I mean not as iconic as someone like Love. But iconic regardless. He always has amazing outfits. Um, his motorcycles are always cool. My personal favorite is always his Tekken 3 motorbiker design. Let's look at that one more time, especially in the ending. Horang. In the ending, this outfit. Now he has these glasses. He basically get them down. You know, he let the hair go down. He won the cup here in his own ending. I mean. In endings, you basically see what happens after the character you picked won the tournament. He he was going to throw the trophy because I believe Jin wasn't there or something like that. And then he saw Jin being chased by Tekken Force. He kicks the shit out of those uh, soldiers. It was so badass. Whole rank has amazing throws, iconic moveset, great design. I mean, look at how badass he looks here. He's so serious. His relationship with Bake is again fine. He's a rival to Jin, and I think in Tekken 8 he will be a more serious rival to Jin. I mean, he always loses to Jin in canon games. In Tekken 7, he kind of defeated Devil Jin, but it was like Jin was out of stamina or something like that because. He fought with Azazel. He, he sacrificed himself. He was in a coma, coma state. In Tekken 8, I think he will be even more serious. And I'm looking forward to that. Horang is an amazing character. Jack 7. I mean, he's a staple, but I'm not a fan of Jack 7 and Kuma that much. At least they tier. Boring to watch in Tekken 7 Evo, by the way. He's just there t so that the other guys could kick the shit out of him or broke him to pieces so that they would look... They would look like more impressive because they are beating these huge machines. Especially in Tekken 5, you can feel that easily. But in Tekken 8, there's a different touch. In Tekken 8, Jack 8 is very cool. With that railgun, uh, railgun finish, but at the same time, um, Jack Eight will be like the commander of Jack Seven army. I saw that in the latest Tekken Eight trailer. Let me let me show you that. All right, this won't. I shouldn't write Nina. Wait a second. 
in the one where release date yeah even in the thumbnail all right all I have to do is keep the thumbnail all right I missed the thumbnail but let's see where it is here oh I missed let's see how it looks on yeah it is visible as you see this is Jack 8 here right next to Nina but the wine the ones behind are Jack 7s I like this touch a lot because this this time Jack will be an improved version of itself rather than just being the same character with the number change or design change and you can already feel that in Tekken 8 with new moves an amazing intro rage art with railgun Jack will be a little bit more appealing in Tekken 8 in my opinion but so far Jack was a boring character but still iconic regardless now they did that gay shit where they you know act like uh, Julie and JC's like separate characters I mean this is basically same character with different versions they are not different Julia is unfortunately an 8 tier character he could have she could have been much more because Chang's are a unique moveset they were important to the story in the first three games then Julia became this boring scientific science bitch at first then she became a streamer I do not like that stream is live ready intro she's sexy as fuck though she is sexy in a different way I mean Anna is slutty I mean this is not a slut but she's hot in a different way I can't I can't name it so again iconic character was important to the story she had that iconic ending in Tekken 3 which was the first ever Tekken ending with voice acting so she has her qualities 8 tier Jin is obviously the pastor boy I did not I did not like the emo direction they took with Jin in the later Tekken games I do not I did not I do not like that karate Jin I like the original badass Jin in Tekken 3 where he basically had the combination of his mother's and father's movement in Tekken Blood Bloodline he was amazing you know Heihachi trained him in Mishima way but when he had a then of course he fought with Heihachi himself he was losing then he remembered his mother's uh, teachings and he combined it with Mishima style and he defeated Heihachi in Tekken 3 those were so cool Jin I mean with his uh, gi with a uh, flame in his pants with the gloves with lightning with devil form Jin has it all it was such a great character a complex character he wanted to erase the evil perhaps he didn't like how the devil uh, devil Jin made him felt because it is evil in Tekken 8 they finally took a step in the right direction with Jin he is less emo he doesn't he doesn't do that gay power is everything bullshit anymore he was insufferable in Tekken 6 and Tag 2 but in the previous I mean in 4 and 5 he was mediocre with that karate moveset in 3 and Tag, tag 1 and possibly in Tekken 8 he was at his peak amazing character iconic he has it all Jim Pachi is I don't think he's as good as Ogre as a boss now some may think that oh, Jim Pachi was harder Ogre was too easy let me rant about that a little Ogre when you play in Tekken 3 you have to unlock 10 characters and in order to unlock those 10 characters you, ha you have to pass through 10 stages in Tekken 3 Imagine be ogre, ogre being a broken boss and you have to go through him for like 10 times. It would be so frustrating and you know bad. 
so Jim Pachi was a cheap boss but as soon as you figure the pattern he was easy and again Jim Pachi wasn't playable until tag 2 Ogre was playable in its own game in and in tag 1 and in tag 2 it was a tag, uh, top tier character also and that Mishima fanboyism is getting really old I do not like it there is no reason for a character called Jinpachi. You already have Heihachi as the old Mishima. You don't need this guy. But still, he was he had such a good um, he had so many good moves in Arsenal. I like the giant as uh, giant mouth with teeth, long teeth in the stomach. I like the way he throws fireballs. So still a good boss character but not necessarily in S tier in my opinion. The history is not there with this guy. He was just there and Heihachi betrayed him and that's it. There's nothing else with this guy. Ogre has so many things like killing Jun, causing many characters disappearance in Tekken 3, God of Fighting, Ancient. You know, I think there's a tier between Ogre and this guy. Again, the Mishima fanboys who like to masturbate to Mishima moveset may think like Jinpachi should be higher. I had to disagree with that. The franchise shouldn't be all about Mishimas. Many people say that or even. Jun is as well but and perhaps depends on how well she will be in uh, Tekken 8. She could go here but for now she's here deservingly so because again she is the mother of Tekken basically her death in the hands of Ogre was a huge deal I mean of course she's she is coming back now and her her coming back will be a huge deal in Tekken 8 I mean it's already is and her moves involving with lights will be good her rage art is amazing she was the boss in Tekken tag games which is again very very cool let's see what will happen in the story mode let's see if it could elevate her to the S plus tier her design in Tekken 8 is so good I'm talking about face model the way she talks and the light inspired moves they will explore more they will explore the Mishima um, Kazama clan more in Tekken 8 I'm looking forward to it this she is a good character Katarina is a boring bland fuck she races with Bruce when it comes to being bland Kazumi here I mean she wasn't that iconic let's put it here also she's such a bitch for trying to assassinate Heihachi for no reason she's the source of devil I mean she and her clan I believe in Tekken 7 her clan gone extinct that was just one old guy I believe Heihachi probably I mean Mishima, pla Mishima clan probably eradicated Hachijo's after Kazumi's betrayal this is what I get from Tekken 7 she was cool but also she was such a bitch basically she was cana canonically dead the design was cool the story was cool but I feel like she will never appear again and nobody will ask for Kazumi in the future games I mean I'm not putting her to here because I think the character was very cool as, as much as I mean also her devil form was very very cool as well Kazuya is obviously here I mean I rant about Kazuya already I mean that piece of shit main man sweep makes me hate the character but still realistically he belongs to here easily he was so good in Street Fighter cross Tekken you know he was manhandling Ryu and Ken at the same time this was basically the trade-off 
Street Fighter producers made Kazuya look like a badass against Ryu and Ken. But against that, Harada made Ak- Akuma look stronger against Heihachi. This was their trade-off when it comes to their lores and the power levels of their characters, basically. It is a tragic character, I mean, he just got thrown by his father as a kid. He survived somehow, he seeked revenge and of course Heihachi killed his mother. He doesn't know about the devil thing and Kazumi trying to assassinate Heihachi. And then in Tekken 7 he learned that uh, Kazumi asked Akuma to assassinate both Heihachi and himself. He was laughing like a maniac. Junis died also during his absence. I mean, so many things are going on. This character is not bad or anything. Again, the main man Sui makes me hate this character and on top of that, of course, he wasn't in Tekken 3 so I didn't met with the guy. So these two are more appealing to me personally, but I'm giving it I'm giving Kazuya its credit. He belongs here easily. No question. King here as well easily. The Jaguar mask is the pro wrestler. By the way, if you call King as a luchador, go fuck yourself. Luchadors are like these small high flyers in WWE who are jobbers. Literally, all of them are jobbers, except Rey Mysterio, who still wasn't very competitive to begin with. You won't see Rey Mysterio beating John Cena, for example. You won't see Rey Mysterio beating Triple H. Luchadors are fucking jobbers in uh, WWE. King is something else. When you King, when you call King a luchador. His badassery level just drops. King is a powerhouse type of wrestler. I mean, he's one of those super athletic ones like Drew McIntyre, where the guy is huge but also athletic. You know, this is what King is. King is not a jobbing high flyer in uh, WWE. Let me tell you that. Fuck luchadors and fuck everyone who calls King a luchador to to try to la- l- uh, sound cool. You don't sound cool when you call King a luchador. Fuck you. Kuma. Now this is the only animal that I like. A tier. Again, an iconic character. His pet of Heihachi. He's fun in a way, you know. He groans, but everyone understands what he's saying. Fun endings all the time. That love story with Panda is fine. I mean, he's so likable. From his endings to his relationship with Heihachi to his endings. Endings are amazing. They are all fun with Kuma. I love Kuma so much. Kunimitsu is fine. I mean, these are just same characters. I don't care if one of them is the other's uh, daughter. It is Kunimitsu in the end. Let's put the OG one. Kunimitsu is a little bit overrated, but in at the same time, it is a cool concept. Lots of teleports, you know, fast movement type of character I like. Not I n- I'm not playing her much necessarily but she's enjoyable she can be in Tekken 8 with no problem at all I like Kunimitsu Lars is here Lars is not an S tier character by the way don't give me that crap they try to push Lars to that degree too much she's just the side character of Jin they tried to make him something in Tekken 6, but again, I ranted about this already. He is not there. Lee is here as well, unfortunately. I mean, if they kept Lee as a staple in the roster, I could have put him here, but he fall down from the base roster. Undeservingly, in my opinion, because, again, bitches, bitches who who like to play basic characters 
will never touch to Lee. Lee is a hard character to play, like it or not. There are lots of stances, lots of complicated shit. People are lazy, people won't try to learn him. But people who like to play Lee will be in minority but they will be loyal to Lee. This is why characters like Lee should be there whether their uh, usage rate is low or not. Because people who like Lee won't be able to enjoy other characters. I mean the closest thing to Lee is Xiaoyu. And they are very very different than each other. I mean let's say someone plays Armor King. Fuck Armor King, switch to King. They are similar. You wouldn't lose anything by making Armor King DLC. You wouldn't lose anything like making Fang a DLC. I mean he was DLC in Tekken 7 if I remember correctly. I mean, Fang probably have higher usage rate than Lei, but in the end, you can replace these characters. They are not. They are not unique. Lee is a unique character. People who like to, who like to play this character, won't find something else to enjoy, most of the time. This is why characters like that, characters like Lee, Nina, Xiaoyu, I mean, they will have low usage rates. They are hard to play, but in the end, people who enjoy them will be loyal to it. They can't switch the other characters easily. I mean, with Nina, if you don't bring Anna, I mean, if you exclude Nina and also exclude Nina as well, I would wish that game to fail because these characters are not included. I mean, I can compensate something like Eddie not being there. Brian not being there, there are characters similar to that, them. But with these characters, they are since they are unique. Again, someone enjoys these character characters, won't be able able to enjoy simple characters like Paul. Lee Chalon is here. I mean, he's always in the story mode, but he never became as iconic. I mean, when you say Tekken, no one will talk about Lee Chalon. People will tell, think about Lao. Let's put Ogre here as well to be realistic. I mean, to me, he should be more. But yeah, realistically, S tier. I mean, he. I mean, Harada didn't give the necessary care to the this character and the necessary love to this character. If he if he would give this character that importance and that care, that interest, this character would be as successful as any Mishima. That being said, Lee Chalon is here. Let's see who else. Leo, boring, bland, fuck. The only thing that is going for this character is that people can't tell if he's a man, male or female. That's it. Tekken 6 sucks when it comes to introducing characters. 7 was terrible as well. But there are some good characters then and there. And speaking of the devil. This guy is a future S tier. But for now A tier. Such a cool and badass design. Wing Chun is a great uh, fighting. Great martial arts. It deserves its, its place in Tekken. Leroy Smith will be an S tier. One more game with him being a staple, and I can easily say this guy is S tier. For now, A tier. But this guy is such a badass. Also, him being blind is a cool touch. I must say that. Lily is same with Asuka, but you know what? Perhaps she's S. She is really really popular and I like the design a lot as well but let's put her to A tier for now. She's elegant, she has an elegant move style, she has a good design as well, e very memorable. 
Rivalry with Asuka is a staple in the franchise as well. Yeah, is E tier. A tier, I'm sorry. <sighs> Fuck off. Fuck that anime schoolgirl dancer bullshit. This character is there so that Korean nerds can f fap to it, basically. I mean, the face design is not that bad, but those glow-like things are just so atrocious. And the name, Lucky Chloe, like... And he took all the testosterone away from Eddie in her ending. Thank you. Fuck that. Marduk is such a badass. Is a tier. I remember how he fought with Anna. Then he was like kidnapping Anna. He took her to on, he took her on her, her her shoulders. I mean, this is an ag badass man who likes to fuck women. His story with King Armor King and himself is so good. Such a great side story. I hope they pick sides in the whole Mishima warfare and fight with each other in the Tekken 8 story mode. I'm looking forward to that. The twist with Armor King, him digging Armor King's grave to be to make himself sure. All of these are amazing touches. And King's ending in Tekken 4 where he was there to assassinate him but, but then he saw the picture of Marduk with his family. All of these were amazing touches. I like King being in the side of uh, Marduk because I believe perhaps Marduk wasn't the wrong side in the battle with the first armor King. It was basically a fight and armor uh, Marduk got victorious, you know? That doesn't necessarily should mean that the first Armor King was the right side. And of course, Armor King 2 can't turn his back on his brother, so he seeks revenge. I, I, again, the storyline is well. And I like the shot in Tekken 5 where in his ending, Marduk basically slits the ropes which are, which are supposed to be super elastic and he was beating those two jobbers in that ring I mean perhaps they were main eventers but next to the Marduk they are nothing bold version of Marduk in Tekken 5 is so iconic easy A tier now I think it is safe to say Master Raven and Raven are different again that piece of shit Joshua Segovia made me hate Raven but let's go realistic. Raven is a nice addition to the Tekken. An easy stable. I think Master Raven is there as a cool character as well. There were some bikini outfits in PC. There were mods. Master Raven is so sexy. Such a sexy body. Let me give you that. Of course I'm being um, sarcastic here. But again some sex appeals being there and there is nice. Both have cool designs, they use ninjutsu, there are, you know, shadow clones, teleports. Watching their gameplay is so fine. If, if, I mean, now in Tekken 8 will have Raven, I wouldn't mind Raven being like the top tier character. I would like to watch Evo matches with Raven being a prominent character. I mean, it would be so fun. Michelle is same as uh, Julia, there is no need for re uh, talking about her or placing her. Fuck Miguel. Fuck this guy. Again, let's say you excluded Mig Miguel. I mean, in, leak in leaked roster of Tekken 8, I remember Miguel not, be uh, not being there. Who gives a fuck? I mean, those two Miguel fans in the world, in the whole planet, can play someone like Fang, or Paul, or Lars. This guy is just a nothing, bland. It's, it's, I don't even know what is his fighting style. Same with Leo. 
What is their fighting styles? What is the difference between like Miguel and Brian? I mean Brian has much more iconic moves, obviously. I don't know an iconic Miguel move. What Miguel does? What Leo does? You know? I mean Lars has that thing where he launches and he switches sides immediately which is very memorable. Love has Bruce Lee moves, Lee has lots of stances, Shayu has that. King has lots of grab moves. Jun will have many um, light moves where he can recover she can recover her HP. How rank has long uh, long legs taekwondo moves. What does I mean again what does these characters do? What does Bob do? No what the fuck Bob, let's put him here. Ganryu is a sumo wrestler, Bob is a boring fuck. Mokujin is your mimic character with iconic design and fun endings all the time. He's scary in a way, look at her, his eyes. Him getting his ass kicked by uh, his wife is will always be funny. And again, when you get bored from playing same characters over and over and over, you can stick to Mokujin for having some fun. Um, Nina is perhaps even S plus, but let's put him put her here. Again, it is a hard character to play, so her usage rate won't be in like top five or anything. But people who like this character will always play her. She's very important to the story. She has a unique move set of her own. She's an assassin. She represents an assassin's fighting style. You know, you can't always look at usage rates. Because people play top tier characters or easy to play characters all the time. This is what casuals will do. Or in pro players or competitive players case, they will always play the characters that have high win rates because they are easy to play or they are advantageous unfairly. That being said, hard characters should be there for people who like to play hard characters, people who like hard inputs. One of my mains for sure, I do not like simple one button characters, I like complexity. Negan fuck off, knock this fuck off, it should be Tifa Lockhart in Tekken 7. Perhaps since Final Fantasy 15 released around the same period with Tekken 7, perhaps Noctis was a good choice to bring some eyes to the game. But still, he's a swordsman. Swordsman doesn't fit Tekken. Prototype Jeb goes here as well, Panda goes here as well. As long as Panda occupies a slot, fuck panda as an alternative skin to kuma it's fine but as a character of her own fuck him i rant about that stupid paul defeating ogre bullshit but i mean again because of that bullshit i hate paul but paul belongs to here with iconic design badassery representative american culture i like america I hope to move America one day. I live in Turkey right now and I I perhaps if there are Turkish viewers may you know swear to me I don't give a shit about you. I don't like living in Turkey. Perhaps one day I will move on. Paul is a good character. And he was a badass. And I even do not like how they ruined this character in latest um, games. He was such a goofball in 7 and 6, I, even if I remember. In 3 and 4 he was at his peak. 
I like that guy in Tekken 3 back. I mean, he was always kind of a goofball, but the badassery was still there. In 7, he was full goofball mode. With that stupid ending with Panda. You know, people were throwing objects at him for defeating Panda and winning the fucking tournament. Fuck that. I'm not going to rank the mob Shaheen. At least he has some personality. But he's not as beloved as some of these characters. Okay, fine, tier. Just like with these characters, what Shaheen does, I don't know. Bland moveset. Boring personality. He's just there because it's an Arabian character, so it kinda gives him a little bit of a character. A little bit. He's an okay fine tier, not high. Uh, fuck this. Fuck that kangaroo. Steve Fox is actually. I think it is safe to put him to S tier. He's your uh, boxer. He's. He has a nice story. Uh, story with Nina. He has a friend. He has a relationship with Paul and Lau as friends. He will be in Tekken 8. He's a staple, deservingly so, since Tekken 5. Again, the look, the body size for a boxer, everything makes sense with this guy. He's enhanced in Mishima Laboratories. He has the genetics of Nina, which makes me love him extra, but I think it is safe to put him as an S tier character. He's iconic. Tiger Jackson, who cares? True Ogre. Again, let's put him next to Ogre. I mean, these guys are so iconic. I mean, I, mean, I want to put them to S or even S plus, but lore-wise, Harada ignores these characters too much. Just too much. It's sad. In my, in my personal tier list they would be in top alone and then Nina and Love would came. I wanted to mention that. I mean Trogre is iconic with his snake arm, teleports, fire bread. No, I want to put them to S tier so much but I mean in my perspective they are like S tier but they never reached that popularity state. I mean in Tekken Tag 2 Ogre was low tier. If he was a if, if he was in a good tier as as far as you know uh, gameplay wise I think he would be played much much more. Ogre was in a, one of the tournament finals. There was a guy called Bronson Tran. He was playing through Ogre and Jimpachi those finals were so fun to watch because again these characters have super strong moves they are manhandling the opponent's ass they are so fun to watch I mean many of the characters here are less fun to watch than these boss characters because they have manhandling movesets I mean, these characters should show should see some more love, in my opinion. They should be DLCs. I mean, every single one of them should be a DLC in Tekken 8. I'm tired of Kunimitsu's. I'm tired of Ganryu's. Come on, these characters should be there, in my opinion. They have hard-hitting moves with some, you know, f with some... Um, fantastic elements to them Wang Jin Rei Wang is a cool character deserves B tier at least he's your old man here and design and moveset was fitting to the character he was like master of Xiaoyu they had similar moves everything makes sense with this character Unknown was a good addition. He was changing the. She was changing the. She was like Mokujin, but she was changing the 
moveset in the middle of the fight instead of you know changing the moveset in the end of each round so she was unique in that regard in Tekken Tag 2 she had lots of different abilities like uh, there was like a purple giant hand was appearing and smashing the enemy there were so many cool things with unknown in Tag 2 as well as in Tag 1 such a great boss character just like all of the other boss characters Xiaoyu is S tier same with Li user trait doesn't matter this is a hard character to master and play so of course less people will play but people who play this character will enjoy her a lot she's love interest to Jin will play a important role in story it was in uh, she was in blood vengeance as well very evasive very fun to play every once in a while when I'm tired of playing Lao and Nina I switch to Xiaoyu and Li and Anna sometimes or Mishima's as well Xiaoyu is a great character very iconic nice evasive Yoshimitsu is easy S tier Iconic, I mean Don't let the tentacle uh, Tentacle hentai Mitsu deceive you This character has so many badass designs Especially the Tekken tree with uh, you know the skull design I mean he was fine in every game Outside of Tekken 7 Tekken 7 was garbage Tekken 7 was dog shit it was too anime again his Tekken 8 design is kinda like Tekken 3 but it was enhanced I like Tekken 8 Yoshimitsu so much I mean others are good as well here it is the Tekken 6 one which is good I mean he has lots of teleports spin attacks troll movements life sacrificing movements here in Tekken Tag 2 his Tekken Tag 2 uh, design was badass as well. What else? Oh, his Tekken 4 uh, design was dog shit as well. That butterfly beetle like thing. It was terrible. Every, every other one is good. He has lots of cool sword moves. He has helic. He swings sword like a helicopter. He sits on the ground like a troll. He teleports around. Lots of cool stuff to pull with Yoshimitsu. Easiest here. Zafina is like the only good Tekken 6 newcomer together with Lars. She's hot, sexy, Egyptian. She was an important asset to Tekken 6 story. I believe she made it to the main ros base roster in Tekken 8 deservingly so she deserved it an easy 8 tier I like the design so much as well I mean she's not a typical sex appeal she represents the culture where she's from I like that a lot she's linked to the Azazel in a way which is very cool she's mature not a your um, anime schoolgirl or anything I respect the character a lot and uh, while it is I mean all these characters are same in a way to another character here but armor king plays different than king and armor king is such a badass I want to put him to S tier and you know what I think he deserves S tier high usage rates all the time whether he's top tier or not Badass moveset as bad as King, but she he's edgier in a way, you know. Armor King is so good. His moveset is uh, tougher than King. King is a little bit more mobile. He does more uh, Hurricane Rana like type stuff or more submissions. Armor King is much more manhandling to the opponent. 
this is why I don't know why Armor King is what, what Armor King was like at the last. I mean, he, he, his name begins with A. I mean, this is it for me. This is again, this is not my personal opinion. This is how it should be, and I insist on that shit. If this was personal, again, ogres would be on top. Love, Nina would be on top. Guys like Paul would be in the fuck off tier. I mean, not because character is bad. I'm tired of pa Paul fanboys. They always bitch about Paul being not that strong. They were bitching about Paul not defeating Ogre in Tekken Bloodline. Fuck you. Ogre didn't defeat Ogre. I mean, Paul didn't defeat Ogre. Fuck you, piece of shit. I'm tired of you assholes. I'm just tired of explaining you how it doesn't make any sense. How this is a tournament. How he cannot reach to the finals to fight, confront Ogre even. How could Paul forget to defeat Ogre? Then Ogre transforms and tournament continues somehow. This is a tournament. Someone should be watching the fights. This is this was again so stupid. Remove the cringe fans and Paul is like an S tier for my personal opinion as well. I'm tired of it these sick fucks. I'm tired of you. I'm tired of explaining this shit in forums or in comment sections. When there is a new about Tekken. I'm tired of you. Go away, fuck yourself. You act like you know about lore, but you know nothing in the end. You don't know that this is a retcon, and you don't know that this is corrected in Tekken 6. I'm tired of you piece of shits. The Tekken Bloodline anime approved by Parada himself, by the way. He really didn't even make the finals. He lost to King. And in Tekken 3, when you pick Jin, stages most of the time King, before Heihachi all the time. And some people don't recognize this. In Tekken 3, after unlocking e uh, full roster, play the arcade mode and in stage 8, the characters are usually fixated. There's a percentage. If you pick Nina after unlocking Anna, stage is most likely be Anna. When you pick Jin, it is King in the stage 8. The same goes with Tekken 3's um, uh, Tekken Force mode as well. Both characters are related to the character you picked for Tekken Force mode. And I believe when you pick Jin, the first boss is King. Then Ho Rang and Xiaoyu, and then of course Heihachi is the final boss. It is fixated. Paul didn't defeat Ogre. Paul didn't even make it to finals. Harada is a dumbass who follow. Uh, who reads comment section of Twitter so much. So this is why he made that shit up in Tekken 4. Because Paul was popular back in the day. Then he changed it back because it, again it didn't make sense. And imagine Jin had this revenge story with Ogre. Imagine how it would look weird and out of place when Paul would defeat the Ogre but then Jin step in and defeat Troger, which is stronger than Ogre by the way. How could Jin couldn't make it to finals and beat Troger, a fire breathing monster? Without Devil Jin or Mishima Bloodline, how could any character could beat Ogre or Troger? Paul is not even like that super disciplined fighter or anything. He was like that in like Tekken 3 era, then he was like a street fighter or something like that. Uh, unfortunately, I wish I wish they treated Paul with some seriousness. Then uh, perhaps I could have accepted him defeating this bullshit. Or defend it maybe. But I can't do this. I just can't do this. Someone like Brian defeating Ogre would make sense. Brian is a cyborg. So he's enhanced. 
he's a superhuman being super strength he can analyze enemies attacks at a point uh, at a point he can throw precise punches because his brain works faster there are so many excuses excuses you can come up with you can't you can't justify Paul defeating Ogre and I'm so glad it changed back to Jin defeating Ogre in Tekken 6 and Tekken Bloodline anime thank you for that oh that was a nice uh, tier list it was realistic I mean people's personal opinions can change this is not my personal opinion this is how it should be a character like Elsa is not as iconic or important as like love basically you can think Alice you can like Alisa more for in your personal tier list Alisa could be here but realistically she isn't perhaps let's move Alisa to A tier yeah this would be this would be more justified and with that this tier list is over thanks everyone for watching